Welcome to Never Rewrite. I'm Isaac Askew. And I'm Jeffrey Sherman. And today we're doing a special Fuck Up Friday episode. Today's episode is going to be a fuck up of mine from a long time ago. It's the story of how I lost a billion dollars for a day. Mm, All numbers. That's a good one. Yes. So the, the nice thing about finance, when you I worked in finance for the first 14 ish years of my career. And the nice thing is the numbers get very big very quickly, which causes all kinds of fun things. They also get very small very quickly. So you a t- a, it, it, amateurs are very easy to spot in finance because they'll use things like floats and doubles to represent money, or they will use ints to represent money. The joke being, well, how many decimal places could you possibly need precision on? And it's like, well, eight, 12. Some of the currencies don't trade oh. very well. Like they're, they're not worth much. And then on the other side, well, what's the biggest number you could possibly need? Well, hint, 4 billion, which is like the upper end of an int, is not going to cut it. Interesting. <laughs> Things I've never had to think about. The, yeah, it's... The takeaway is if you see somebody using uh, a floating point number to represent money, realize that they are an amateur and gently correct them. That, <laughs> that you cannot do that. You are you are asking for pain, and you will get it. So for this particular story, I was working. I was in charge of a system called the drop copy. If you've ever watched an older movie where people are trading in the pits in Wall Street, you've got the guys in the vest and they're making hand signs and gestures and they're writing things up with pencil. Pre, pre-90s, or b- before they closed the pits, they would take, you know, they would make all these gestures at each other and then they would write it down and they would take the little pieces of paper and they'd hand it to runners and runners would then go and run them to a, literally a phone. They would call up the, what was called the back office. The back office would write it down. And then at the end of the day, and the stock market closes early-ish it closed uh back then it would close at like 3 30 so that the back office would have time to compile all these pieces of paper and then send the report to the counterparties so like okay i think Mm -hmm. you know i bought you you would summarize it all up like i bought you know ibm i bought 100 shares at this price and then i sold you a thousand shares at that this price and blah 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 you know you sum it all up and you send it to the counterparty And they would send you theirs. And then in the morning, you would reconcile. So part of this lives on today. Uh, If you've ever traded stocks online, you know, you trade the stock and you don't really have the money till two days later. Stocks don't close for two days. And this is to give humans the chance to fix anything that gets screwed up. So Mm -hmm. back when you're having this paper, it's like, oh, well, I think I traded with you and you don't have that trade. Now that the back offices have to work it out. It's like, oh, okay, well, I think I have this trade. You don't think you have this trade, you know, or you think it was at a different price and then that they have to work it out manually. And that's why there's two extra days in the system. Oh, interesting. Now, when it got computerized, we're talking 2003, our drop copies will be done 10, 15 seconds after the, the market closed and we'd be on our way. Now, at this point, I was working for a company called INET, which had revolutionized everything. Uh, it opened the door to high-frequency trading, all kinds of wonderful and terrible things. And we had <laughs> totally defeated our biggest rival called Instanet. And because this is capitalism and not you know, a fable about morals, Instanet responded by buying <laughs> us. That, that's how they fixed us. <laughs> if you can't beat them, <laughs> buy them. <laughs> Okay. And so now I had to work with my counterparty who I'm going to call Bob because I have not worked with a developer named Bob in many years. And this developer's name was not Bob. (laughs) I got it. (laughs) I'm going to call this guy Bob. And Bob owned the drop copy system for Instanet. And Bob was a lazy, Bob was lazy and not a very good programmer. Okay. And his system was buggy and mine was not. And so every day I would come in in the morning and Bob would be like, hey, your system screwed up. There's, you know, a problem. 
And I would have to go through the logs and reconcile what he had versus what I had. And an hour later, I would show Bob, hey, look, I'm right. Your system didn't process this message here. You know, here's where it is. Here's, you know, probably where the bug is in your code. I think at this point I had the code, so I would even just show him, like, here's your bug. Mm -hmm. And this would be a weekly thing going on for two, three months. And so one day, of course, it's the one day. One day I come in and Bob's like, hey, you've screwed up again. And I, I, I believe I was hungover. And I was like, I have not screwed up again. Okay. I have never screwed up. It's never been my fault, Bob. Today, I want you to do the debugging. And you prove to me that it's my fault before I look at it. Because it's always been your fault. You know, your fault. How did, how did he take that? Or did you literally say that to him or just suggest you uh, in, in different ways? As I remember it, I was hungover, so I don't think I said it very loudly, but I was just like, <sighs> and I said more or less that to him. All right. And it was not a wonderful relationship between Bob and I. Yeah, doesn't sound great. Because at this point, you know, I had spent many, many hours fixing his bugs, and he wouldn't even like, you know, look at the logs before just declaring, oh, there's a bug on the other side. Got it. Yeah. I think I'd probably respond similarly. Right. You're just frustrated. So, of course, it was my fault that day. Okay. I, I had rolled out a change, and it was wrong. And I hadn't gotten it testing. And it made it all the way to, four, uh, like, five minutes before the end of the day, before this specific message with whatever type it was that hit the bug that I had introduced and stopped. In financial software, in trading software specifically, you do not want to continue on in a, you don't want to recover and do your best. You're like, oh, yeah. you want to, the software was designed to move very fast and completely de to decompose at the first sign of trouble. It's like, oh, oh I'm, I don't know what's going on. Something's wrong. I'm putting my hands up. I'm not doing anything. Seems safer. So that yeah. is so much safer than trying to continue on in a degraded state. So five minutes before the closing bell, my software had stopped. So it had stopped a billion dollars short. Our counterparties were very oh. angry. Wow, okay. <laughs> uh, because the tape was wrong. Now, the good thing here is it's all based off of a tape and the tape is completely deterministic. Uh, a wonderful episode we could do in the future is how a sequencer works because it's um, distributed state at scale, right? If you've got a system moving at a million events a second and you want to have distributed state at scale, Kafka is not going to do that for you. Kafka will distribute the events, but it's not going to give you state. You, know, you, you need to layer other things on top. And so, we have a distributed state at scale, which means that it's highly deterministic. So I could actually take the take the tape, I mean, literally, mm -hmm. it's not literally a tape, but it's a sequential numbered system uh, of data. And you take it and you replay it and it takes 15 minutes you know, to, to replay the whole day because you're going from disk to your machine. And yep, sure enough, it stops. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, oh, okay. So I fixed the bug replay it wait, wait the, what was the bug <laughs> i i don't remember it's 15 oh, come on, years ago. Like... <laughs> it was something stupid but, it was probably stupid, but okay I, I had an offset wrong mm. for this kind of data you're talking this stuff was going fast enough uh so it's all java and i remember being in arguments about big indian and little indian where the in computers the most significant byte is first and on networks the least significant byte is first so every byte when you read it off the network the code has to flip it mm -hmm. like flip the order of the bits and our software as when you're doing you know trying to get as fast as possible our software didn't flip bits it took it network order okay and I remember that I remember this discussion because there was a um, 
the the guy's name who came up with this the encoding scheme, his name was Endian, E I N D I N A N. I loosely remember this from college days, yeah. <laughs> right, and so there's big Endian and little Endian, right? Which way the Gulliver's travels, right? That's the joke. And yeah. in when I remember sitting in the meeting where we discussed it, and afterwards, a developer uh, who was Indian turned to me and was like, "Dude, what was <laughs> up with that fucking racist shit about big Indian, little Indian?" <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, I, this hadn't uh, been a popular concept in programming at that point. I, I guess not, or maybe this guy just wasn't very good. I'm trying. I've been many minutes. <laughs> okay. The only thing I really remember is he's Indian because otherwise it wouldn't. The story wouldn't make sense. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, that I'm like it, no, no, Indian. It it, it 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 sounds like Indian, but there's an e at the front. It's a yeah, person's yeah. e. <laughs> Which end do you eat the egg from? It was which was a joke from Gulliver's Travels. The big end or the little end of the egg? The pointed end of the egg? Yes. But, and they were like a warring tribes or something with different opinions on how to. I think it was eating the egg or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gulliver's Travel. I read that once, and it goes on far, far too long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway. <laughs> so I I had screwed up the message parsing at some point. I'd added something to handle a new field, and it blew up. So I fixed it, and because everything's replayable, because it's all highly deterministic, or it's not highly, it's completely deterministic, mm -hmm. I, I was able to replay it and, and generate the file, and then everything you know went on. So I only lost the billion dollars for a good four or five hours and had to debug it while hungover. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a long time to have That's that a long time to be sweating a billion dollars, yeah. Yes. Okay, so besides just, you know, the whole I have to fix this because this is my bug kind of thing, describe for me the state of panic <laughs> around you with all the people putting pressure on you because of this find. It actually wasn't so bad. Right? Mm -hmm. Like people came by and like, hey, there's a billion dollars missing. And I'm like, I know. So I'm looking for it. <laughs> The worst part was the reversal from I'm not putting up with your shit anymore, Bob. You, this is obviously another one of your bugs. Mm. To then having to eat crow. Yeah. And be like, yeah, that actually is my bug. You know, it's going to be yours sometimes. <laughs> right. The, the, the moral of the story is it's going to be yours. Yeah. And it's going to be yours when you're hungover. <laughs> and it's a billion dollars and not like one trade for like $100. But this is why they have, you know, T plus two, trade plus two for, for clearing, right? The, the the system is designed to give you a chance to recover from bugs. Got it. Right. That's pretty Wall clever. Street, for all of its many, many, many flaws, has well-designed operational systems that take human frailty into account. That's good. Because they're all battle-tested. So it's like all these things are there. <laughs> All their because, developers also lost a billion dollars at some point. Well, it's humans, right? It, it, yeah. It, even before the developers, it was humans. Right. So you keep these things around because humans fuck up, and then humans write the software, so humans are still fucking up. And so, yes, I had to eat the crow. Mm -hmm. People came by, but nobody was. It was a really nice thing about INET's systems is that they were deterministic, which is a rarity. And so nobody was like the data wasn't lost. The data hadn't been generated, but the raw data wasn't lost. Right. That was yeah. Catastrophic. Got it. So there was no, yeah. You're not scared about losing that because you're just like, oh, we're just going to keep replaying this until, until the book, until it works. Just after we fix the bug. Right. That's, yeah. I so, could see that just making the whole vibe a lot less, you know, stressful. Yeah. It was much more of a hazing vibe than a, Ah, uh, then a terror vibe. It's like, oh, lost a billion dollars. How's that coming? Did you find the billion dollars yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where's that billion dollars? I could really go to lunch right now. Where's that billion Wait, dollars? How long after this event did people keep ripping you? <laughs> uh, it was forgotten within a couple days. <laughs> That's how like normal this was for them, apparently. <laughs> or boring. No, but it, it, bugs happen. Yeah. And it, 
it's on the clearing side, right? So the, these are, this is where but this is where it's safeish for bugs to happen because the money has already like everybody's already agreed to ch for the money to change hands. Now we're just talking about settling up the the bill. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's there. There's no time pressure. There's no. You know, oh my! I've got money on the line on this. It's like, well, no, no, you you had money on the line and you made it or lost it, and now it's time to pay up. So, no, to me the the moral is uh, the just a environment in which one developer never checks for his bugs, and then you finally finally get fed up and you tell Bob off, <laughs> which of course means it's your turn. Yeah. How's that relationship these days? Dead? I, I don't even remember what Bob's real name was. Oh, okay. <laughs> it wasn't even an intentional anonymization. <laughs> you had right, to yeah, I, a I name. couldn't I couldn't <laughs> lay I couldn't name and shame even if I wanted to because I don't remember his name. <laughs> well, ouch. <laughs> I hope he doesn't find this episode <laughs> years later. <laughs> I feel super hurt. Uh, he wouldn't because I don't think he had enough self-awareness to even care. Oh, <laughs> right. He was just not a good. Wall Street is full of very mediocre developers getting very large checks because they work at Wall Street. Hmm, that sounds about right. It's the the Google of their day. <laughs> it's the Google of every day. Oof. <laughs> right. You get a job on Wall Street. Always no. It pays well. Yeah. You're under always have the risk of getting laid off, right? It, it's a very, it's not quite mercenary, but it's very transactional kind of employment. We want you right. to do this. We're paying you to do this. We're not necessarily going to shit on you because we're paying you well, but just like we're paying you well. So shut up and do your job. Uh, just absolutely no culture. Like people who wouldn't even admit, like you could work with somebody five years. And not have any idea if they have kids or a wife or anything. Just like totally opaque. There, jeez, <laughs> I am here to make money. Leave me alone. <laughs> right, I'm here to do my job and get paid, and then I'm leaving. Uh, if you ever talk, if you ever hear stories from people on Wall Street and they refer to people as being professional, what they really mean is that they had absolutely no personality. Oof. Okay, a lot of criticisms here. I like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> it, it's a fuck up story it's, if everything was great <laughs> I wouldn't be telling it wouldn't be interesting well, I just meant it, that culture in general not not just your particular story this time yeah all right it's, Wall Street is a unique beast and the culture is unique you always know where you stand which is good okay uh -huh. All right. Well, anything else to that story before we uh, wrap up our fuck up Friday? No, that that is it. Don't always check to make sure it's not your fuck up before you get <laughs> all your topic. I guess is the moral of the story. <laughs> Thanks for listening. I'm Jeffrey Sherman. I'm Isaac Askew, and this is Never Rewrite.